Uh, good afternoon, colleagues, and uh, you're most welcome to our lecture today. And uh, I'm Kajubi Martin, your Writing and Study Skills 2 uh, course instructor. Uh, last time when we met, we talked about a few basics that you would need to, need to include in your letter. If you're writing your letter and you want to communicate something, there might be a few basics that you will need in order to make sure that someone gets to understand what exactly you mean and what you want to do. Uh, my interest today is in uh, looking at uh, how we can write legit uh, cover letters and CVs. A cover letter could be called in the same manner like a motivation letter, and we can also call it uh, a cover letter, motivation letter, or we can call it an application letter, just as we are used to. Uh, my interest would be so much in uh, asking if we have mentors. Would you be able to ask your friend, do you have a mentor? It's really very good to have a mentor. Even when we have very many friends that help us so much in our academic journey, mentors are good because they try to see for us what we don't see. In one way or the other, no matter how smart we are, we need mentors because these mentors are able to guide us on a few different uh, things that we need to consider as we try to chase something that they have chased before. That's why I'll begin on a note that in order to write a very good uh, or legit cover letter and CV. One thing we should put in concern should be that uh, we should be able to have these letters after they are written, reviewed by either mentor or a colleague. Uh, like what I've said about mentorship, it's very good to have a mentor because mentors guide us. But in one way or the other, in having these letters read by the mentors helps us so much in order to be on the lookout for different grammatical errors and uh, other aspects that might not be looked at with a very good eye by the different employers. Uh, when you look at uh, today's world, it's very competitive. That one we have to accept. And uh, the competition that we are facing today allows us to be more creative in order to see that we can break through. We all want to enjoy this world. We all want to get to a place where we are able to satisfy our needs. But how are we going to get there? It all starts from here. Because you want to work for someone, and later on after working to someone, you want to maybe work for yourself at one time. But we need to learn, and in learning, we are going to write these letters to make sure that we are able to work for different people. And one thing that we should know should be that uh, a cover letter, uh, all cover letters and CVs, are the first opportunity to impress uh, a prospective employer. When you send this cover letter, it is able to represent you. It is an ambassador for you. Remember in this case, you're not there to defend yourself unless you're called for an interview. But the first thing that we should take note of is that is the ambassador really going to be able to fulfill what you want that ambassador to do for you. Uh, the most effective cover letters are clear, brief, precise, and written in a business-like style. Uh, we will be trying to, we'll try to open this up about what do I mean by clear, brief, precise, and uh, written in a business letter style. We'll look at the block style being the most widely used uh, standard in writing most of our letters. And, uh, we should know that uh, an engaging style, engaging style is a very good way to make sure that uh, the person you're writing to is able to understand what you want, but yet you're not rude. We have faced very many scenarios. Even before we joined university, or let's say some of us who are upgrading, and this is your degree because you've been doing your diploma, you first very many scenarios about applying. At least you have tried to apply for a job, be it formally or informally. You have had someone connect you to someone in order to get it's something that you can do. After our senior, during our senior six vacation, most of us tried to work in different places. 
Those who have diplomas, we have tried. We have gone to school and later on, we have tried to exercise, to use the skills that we think we have gained uh, during our course of study in order to help other people uh, in different fields where we have the skills and expertise. But one of the most common challenges among our students is that when we are faced with more serious aspects, we don't pay that serious attention. But we want the results to be good. You can think about the last time you appreciated the coursework when it is given. It's really rare to appreciate a coursework. Reason being, sometimes you look at it as something which is encroaching on your time, yet in most cases you paid for it. I would still, from that point, ask us not to write our cover letters last minute. Employers are quick to understand this. Being that the human resource directors or personnel are trained in this, they already know how you should tailor your cover letter. Now, in seeing a very vague cover letter, I might call it so, they're able to detect that either you wrote it when you were in a taxi or it was a night call and you woke up and wrote one. Most of these cover letters need to be given more time. So let's not do it last minute. No matter how smart you think you are, or how quick you are to get Google or anything, because most of these letters are a product of originality. Now, a good letter is difficult to write and will take time to really prepare. Employers tell us that they pay attention to these cover letters, and a well-written one can give you an edge you need to secure an interview. We have talked about that a little bit. So let's go down to drafting a cover letter and saying that keep, always keep your audience in mind as you keep your address in mind, there are these two questions to answer. Why are you interested in this employer? Why should this employer be interested in you? Why are you interested in this employer? And why is this employer interested in you? Let's first concentrate a little bit on the first question. Why are you interested in this employer? We all want to work for the very good organizations that we know. We can list all the very, very good organizations with a very good salary. Everything has to be, we want everything to be good for us. But one thing that we should ask ourselves, even as we think about these organizations, is why are you interested in this employer? Why are you interested specifically to work in that organization? We have tried to date or most of us are trying our level best to see to it that we debt. And uh, one, as one of the most important aspects in dating is that you never go to where you don't see uh, love and passion. You can't go, you can't date for fun. You always date for purpose. And this purpose is what drives you to the moment of convincing someone or doing those naughty, naughty things that we all do to make sure that we win someone's heart. In one way or the other, let's try to take, bring that memory back to a letter. With that interest that we have, let's be able to take in a lot of time. When you, have, when you love something, when you want something badly, you sacrifice all that you have in order to get it. So as we're thinking about why are you interested in this employer, we should put that question at the back of our minds because it's going to help us as we discuss this not come up with very good cover letters. And then question number two, why should this employer be interested in you? I will still use the example of dating. Uh, we have all been rejected at one point. Maybe some of the friends have not started dating yet, which is okay. But at one point, even as we shift focus from dating to other things, we have been rejected. Our proposals at some point have been rejected. And there is that feeling you get after you have been rejected, whether you want something and someone has rejected to give you what you think you need, even when you're, enti you're entitled to getting it, but you want it. Now, in one way or the other, there should be a reason as to why the employer should be interested in you. And the first impression that you give is this letter. If this letter doesn't communicate, it doesn't really specify uh, why this employer should be interested in you or the employer should see the need of filling the gap, then there is no reason why the employer should really 
take you in? These are very important questions. I would like to read them again and help us, let's think about them. Why are you interested in this employer? And then, why should this employer be interested in you? So, how do you create a cover letter that will stand out and will make the employer want to interview you? Because at the end of the day, you're looking for someone or for an organization that will be able to grant you an interview such that you can express yourself and be able to tell them what you can do and what you'll add unto them. So these are the key facts that we need to put in consideration or we need to take note of. I'll be a little bit faster and talk about this as we move to the samples. And uh, the key to a great cover letter. And I'm looking at these key factors, think that these are the most important aspects that we need to put at the back of our mind to make sure that we design very good cover letters. The first one is research. Now, why am I talking about research and how important is research? I'm saying that in researching and learning more about the farm, you will be better, you, or you will be able to explain why you're interested in working there all your letter will be more persuasive to the employer. In any case, as you want this employer, you need to know what does this employer do? And if it does that, will it be able to suit your goals? Don't apply to a position just because you think you need to live or you need money. Because at the end of the day, you'll get the money, but you won't be more happy. I would request that we apply in positions or in cases where we see that we have passion for something. Sometimes it is hard because we need money to live. But I think your interest is, would be so much in positions that would help you. Yes, you can apply in a position, let's say, where you think you think you need money. But at the end of the day, you might not be so happy after you get the money because the work won't add anything onto your career. Now, in addition to learning more about the employer, um, one needs uh, about the employer, you will need to select or to be more emphatic on the relevant skills which will help you demonstrate uh, more persuasively or what the employer should want to hire you. One of the most important things that we should learn about this is that uh, we all want to persuade someone and at the end of the day we want to see them accept what our messages are. One thing that we should put in concern is that uh, the employers have a lot of work to do. And being that they have a lot of work to do, they look for opportunities to make sure that they reduce on that work. Even when the human resource director, uh, the emphasis is to make sure that they recruit people that are up to those skills and can be able to produce uh, what they need still Another important thing is that they will not hire you if they don't see that you have the relevant skills. How do you know that you need to have all you have the relevant skills? One way to know that you have the relevant skills is to make sure that you research about the organization. We are blessed in the age we live in. It's very easy to know about any company anywhere because most of the companies, one thing they do is to have a website. And in having this website, this helps other people to be able to know them because they are trying to show you what they brag about. Some of these companies release, uh, have press releases, I think yearly or monthly. Uh, it's very easy to know about. Today, in the age that we're in, it's very easy to know about anyone. And then, number two, why should we research? That how should we research about these uh, different uh, companies or employers? Now, employers input applicants constructive knowledge of everything on their websites like what I said about the websites and uh, let's say I would still pose some two questions here that are like three questions that would be so important to us to think about and then see how we can move to the different aspect how many people have you talked to regarding your career. 
What advice have they given you? What skills do you think you might need in order to boost your career? Think about the three questions. At the end of the day, you're not going to be where you want to be by mistake. It is important that in order to get where we want to be, we should put in more and more effort because it is not a dream. I think you've heard about phrases of unfulfilled dreams. We tend to dream, most people tend to dream, but at the end of the day, their dreams are not fulfilled. In management, uh, they have the three different people they look at. They look at wanderers, those people who have the vision, but they will never do anything. So the wanderers have the vision, but they will never do anything. And they will never act on it. They will not think about anything, but they will have the vision, very good vision, but they won't act about it. They won't do anything. So I beg that you not among the wanderers, those that have the vision, but they don't think about it. They don't really have the time to invest so much or to risk. And the first thing is say that talk to people who have worked for the farm. It is very important that we talk to people who have worked for some of these farms, such that they give us an idea. No matter the kind of organization you want to work with, it is very important that you search for people who have worked for it. Be it online. Don't be scared to look for online people that have worked for it. Try to create relationships with them. Let them give you an idea such that you get to know what you're heading for. Uh, number two is that read newspaper articles. Most likely, these newspaper articles that are published by some of these firms. In this way, you'll get to know what some of these firms are bragging about and what they want you to fulfill, what they are yearning for, what spaces do they have, what things are lacking in today's world. Let's say the employment, what they think is lacking among their employees and they want to boast so that you're able to polish on those skills. Then research uh, the employee in the different databases or speak to the CDO. CDO is a career development officer. You can speak to the career development officer or anyone, or let's say the staff, the classmates, the alumni, and other people who are familiar with the employer. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to tell you that this is very, very important that we pay respect to the why and how we should research about these different employers. It is very important that we research about them, and I'm also giving you the way through which you can be able to research about them. I beg that we use our time online to be more constructive on building what we want to be. Build your empire now, because no one is going to help you to build your empire in the next uh, very few years. So I beg that we risk. This is the time. We are still young, we have the energy, and we can take different risks compared to when you'll be 40. It will be very hard for you to risk, but now you can risk and then enjoy the fruits of your what? Of your risk. Uh, the other important aspect is that cover letters must be targeted. What do I mean when I say well, cover letters must be targeted? Now, you should know who you're writing it to. And the instance should not be you sending out bulk cover letters to different employers, same cover letters to different employers, just because you need a job. Because that's not how things are. That's not how you match, it, you match out from it. It's a little bit tricky in today's world. Yes, we get, we listen to different people. When you're in that situation and you need a lot of information, you need to be motivated. Most times you discover that you listen to different people. Different people give you different kind of, uh, uh, let's say, information to feed on, such that you can, see us, you can see how you can jump out of something. But I beg that we never make mistakes when it comes to our cover letters. Don't send the very same cover letter to different organizations, because the same mistakes you make in one will still be portrayed in the other. Even when you think you haven't made any mistake, what if, at the end of the day, they get to share something and then your information is able to, to leak out? Look at scenarios where we have people who just copy and paste most of these cover letters. That is one of the most interesting aspects 
when you have to copy and paste the cover letter. Reason being, you'll never be called for an interview. Most of these cover letters and the systems they go through, the plagiarism checks, are able to indicate that the employer has either, uh, sorry, the employee or someone uh, who wants the interview has simply plagiarized. So don't waste your time. Sit down, take time. You feel free to read others, but take time and come up with something that is original. <coughs> oh. Let's look at the content. I bet now that we, we pay much attention to the content. How many paragraphs do we need when you're writing? When I'm writing my cover letter, how many paragraphs do I need? What do I need to include in those paragraphs? How should I structure the letter in one way or the other to make sure that uh, my employer is interested in looking at me and giving me that uh, interview? One of the things that we should take note of here is uh, deciding what goes into your letter you should send. So we are looking at the different paragraphs. I'll start with the first paragraph and say, what do you need in the first paragraph? And I'm saying, before we encourage so much on that, let's first take in these three bullets, saying that uh, the catalyst of your letter, the recommendation of the inf the recommendation of a person influential with the employer or a job announcement. If you're sending a code letter, specify the type of position you're seeking. Externship for credit, work study, volunteer or paid work. Let me throw some kind of explanation to this. Say, most times we can be recommended by different people that have worked in these organizations, all influential employers or let's say other people that are influential but don't work for the same organization. But in their capacity, their voices are able to speak and help us get somewhere. Sometimes we look at announcements in um, different newspapers and then we tend to use that in our introductions. Now, if you're sending a code letter, what is a code letter? Now, a code letter is that letter that you send to another organization that has not advertised, but you just tried to send a letter to them to make sure that they take you in, you want, you want an opportunity, but they have not advertised, yet you have interest to work for them. So a letter that you send to them, yes, could be an application, but in one way they have not advertised. So what are you applying for? In, so in that way we would call it a cold letter. And then, who you are, PG, your class, school and other defining information about you and then your interest in the employer that is your intellectual academic practice area and other aspects but as we fulfill that let's try to pay attention to this that the crux of your first paragraph is why you are interested in this particular employer here are some tips on tailoring your first paragraph to a particular employer. First, contemplate the criteria you need to identify the targeted employer. Think about the factors as practice area, geographic location, and type of setting, and other aspects like clients, firm size, reputation. Explain the employer's opportunity. Employ explain that the employer's opportunity meets or exceeds your criteria. Second, review the employer's website on how the firm describes itself, what the firm says that it's, its philosophy and hallmarks, and then express your interests and disposition, express that your interest and disposition are aligned with the firm's philosophy, goals, and culture. When writing to the government or public interest agencies, carefully attend to the employer's mission. Now, in most cases, According to what you've just read, in most cases, you discover that uh, most of these employers, basically government organizations, government organizations rally behind uh, missions and visions. So make sure you have an idea of their visions. And like what I said at first during our research about these organizations is that we should be able to familiarize ourselves with their websites looking at their press releases, 
in order to discover what their, these organizations are bragging about. Third, when an influential person recommends you to a particular employer, you need to capitalize on that recommendation. I was very pleased when I found this quote by one of your, one of your own. Now, Kim says that uh, is the author of Guerrilla Tactics for Getting the Legal Job of Your Dreams. Now, Kim says that the most powerful letter you can send to any prospective legal employer starts with these seven words. I'm saying we can have anyone, let's say Dr. So and so or Professor So and so, anyone that we need, say that. Uh, recommended that I contact you. That would be classy. That would be legit. Because if such a person recommends you, it shows that you are exceptional or you have different traits that these people might be looking for. And then explain why the influential person recommended you to contact the employer. And two, why the firm is a great match for you. For example, let's look at this. And say that, uh, let's say that uh, Dr. Tumwebaze Wilson, knowing my long lasting interest in prisons' rights work, suggested that my knowledge and skills would be a great match for your firm. When you look at that, say, Professor Wilson. At first they said, Doctor, it's okay. Professor Wilson, to Mwebaze, knowing my long-lasting interest in prison's rights, suggested that my knowledge and skills would be a great match for your firm. That would be a superb way to start your letter. Very good way. And the, the thing is, by the time we talk about that person, Professor so-and-so, it shows that by the time that person recommended that you should do that, it is a sign that you have unique skills that these guys might need. Let's look at paragraph two. And saying that the second paragraph, why should this employer be interested in you? Remember, if we do a recap, we say that the first paragraph, our first paragraph is simply trying to market us. You're saying, uh, you're giving different aspects, a little bit that can market you. Maybe, how did you get to know about this different opportunity? And let's say, who recommended you? In one way, you might have someone who has recommended you, or you might have a way you got to know about this. It might be through a newspaper, and uh, from that newspaper, you got an idea that these people needed someone, let's say a clerk or anyone. Or it might be a professor at a different university or anyone out in the field but has been influential in that uh, organization or is in that specific line of service and is well known. So by the time he recommends you, it shows that you have very good skills and you can really work for these people. Now, the second paragraph. The second paragraph simply answers the question, why should this employer be interested in you? In this paragraph, you discuss specific things about yourself and your background that will make the employer think, I would really want to meet this person. Uh, I'm saying that review your background and choose two or three things about you that will be the most important to the employer. You might want to ask yourself, how will I know that how will I know what the employer needs in an employee? As you research about this organization, you are able to know really what the employer needs from this employee. And then, in, explain, in explaining why the employer should be interested in you, you can address the three elements. I beg that we really be keen on this. In explaining why the employer should be interested in you, you could, should address the three basic elements. One is your academic background. Two 
is your practical experience. And three is your personal qualities. You can split this discussion into, may, into as many as three paragraphs. This will help so much in what the employer will consider when they are trying to take you in. I would like to look at the academic background. Let's concentrate on the academic background first. Not all of us have performed well. Not all of us have performed well, sorry. But we have had different things that we have done that make us really qualify for some of these positions. And you should never think that you don't qualify for a certain position just because you didn't perform well in class. Well, we cannot all perform in the same way. Others will get first class degrees, others will get second class degrees, will have second, lower, and others as well. But how should we be able to tailor our academic background to match what this person might need or will look at? And academic background, we should take note that uh, it involves very many things, very many, very many aspects, such as extracurricular activities. And uh, one thing that we should take note of about the academic background involves the aspect of us not performing well. In cases where you have did not perform well and you discover that you don't have that class of degree that someone is looking for, and I'm saying that if you are in the bottom half of your class, that's how I chose to write about it. If you're in the bottom half of your class, and because your class now, you discover that your class standing will not appear on your cover letter or on your CV, you might not be able to indicate that. But how should we then do it? I say, in order to do it very well, you should think about this way. Like, if you're comfortable or out of danger, of being on academic probation, include a description of your performance that makes you, uh, that really paints that picture. But for some of us who are not uh, having that kind of picture, I beg that we concentrate so much on the different activities that we're able to do that can really communicate. That's why I say that uh, Academic background is not simply one's class standing. It involves a panel of curricular and extracurricular activities. Have you taken courses relevant to the employer you are applying to? That would be something, take note. Are you pursuing all and the relevant certificate? You can talk about that. So it would be of help, other than concentrating so much on the class of degree that might not really bail you out. Uh, <clears throat> practical experience. Now, when you look at practical experience, remember we said that there are three things in looking at why uh, concentrating on the question of uh, why should this employer be interested in you. The other aspect that we can look at uh, is practical experience as we're nearing the conclusion, practical experience. Now, in explaining why an employer should be interested in you, the second element to discuss is your practical experience. Figure out what kind of knowledge and skills the employer is looking for. If you have experience in working in an area of law, you can specialize on your strength as your legal analytical research, advocacy, client management, and writing skills. If your experience is strictly non-legal, now we also have those cases. The areas where you're going to discover that the kind of skills that they're looking for, you don't have them. And it is okay, it is fine when you don't have the skills because you've not had an opportunity to work with some of these organizations or anything that, has, that is in line with what you want to, to be. But later on, you look at these guys being the first, or this is the first opportunity you're getting to work with such uh, a company. So if you have non-legal experience, those who have legal experience, well, try to capitalize on that and figure out how it can help you. And say that's why in the first, uh, say that if you have experience working in any area of law, you can emphasize the strength such as your legal, analytical, 
research, or advocacy, client management, and writing skills, because you've exercised them before. But for our friends who have not really had this experience, you have not been anywhere, or you discover you have not really worked for these people. Let's say you worked in a restaurant before you joined your law school. You could note that the importance of, because in any opportunity that we get, we discover that there is something that we learn. You can note about the importance of being on time, reliable, diligent, and be able to work alongside co-workers and customers. The point is to look for the common denomination between your experience and what the employer needs and focus on those common denominators. So there would be so much of help. Uh, in order to understand this so well, we need to know that uh, these cover letters that we write, we don't simply write them to give someone an idea of who we are, but to market ourselves. Because most of the people we are writing to, these are people that need the services, and they will never concentrate or give someone time who they look at as someone who is wasting their time or doesn't really have the skills necessary to fulfill. But even when you look at that fact, we should know that not in all cases we are going to have worked for different places. Remember, you're fresh, you're coming from school, and you need to get into this opportunity and then build your career. But everyone would like to invest in something which at the end of the day is going to give back or bring good results. So it is good, it would be good that we concentrate so much on the two. Those who have the practical skills, concentrate on them and talk about them. We look, we'll have a sample that will explain that. And then those who don't have would also look at opportunities that have really engaged us. Was it a coursework that you did? Was it a research that you contributed to? Which kind of skills did you pick from that? That is one way or the other. Could it be um, an extra cultural activity that you engaged in? What kind of skills will you pick from, from that different activity? And the different things that really do, that which you think that don't match, but these other things really match because they help us to show that we are really flexible and we can work at any point. And saying that your practical experience may be broader than simply work experience. Practical skills can be a substitute of work experience, particularly when you don't have relevant legal work experience. You need to flame cultural activities such as, yes, like I talked about, the moot court and moot trial competitions, law review, other journals, client counseling, negotiation, and uh, meditation training in terms of experience that is relevant. So it would be good that we look at that also. Uh, the last bit in this would be on uh, personal qualities. Remember we are looking at those aspects that would show that why the employer might be interested in you and will take you on for an interview. And it's saying that personal qualities, which kind of personal qualities would someone have in order to meet the demands of the employer? Saying that do you pride yourself in work, in your work ethic, sense of responsibility, ability to work multitask? Then you may want to mention in your cover letter some qualities you think distinguish you. In job announcements, sometimes employers allude to the qualities that they think are key to the successful performing the job. Uh, sometimes employers allude to the qualities they think are key to successfully performing the job for, your, for which you are hiring. When an employer says it is look, uh, it's looking for an energetic new team member to join its employment litigation team, you would be well served by noting examples of your energy and then team spiritedness. Let's take a look at this example. Now you discover that yourself, self-starter and quick study, you're going to discover that, let's say, with your personal or 
personal awareness. Regarding the people you worked for, you discovered that you were a self-starter or a quick study. And you might try not simply to indicate that you are a self-starter or a quick study. The best way to bring out that would be in uh, incorporating that idea with what you did in the corporation or how that was brought out uh, when you're being hired for the first time. And someone can be able to say that working for Corporation X required that I be a self-starter and a quick study. Only one week after being hired, my supervisor was transferred to another office. I successfully managed and operated the sales department from that day forward, increasing our sales by 20% in just two years. Now, this might work for someone who has really been uh, in the field. Let's say spend that time in the field. But what about in areas where you've not had those years in what? Uh, in service. Still, we can have an idea from this same aspect on how we can develop or come up with an area that can really build our curriculum vita. Say, working for the Corporation X required that I be a self-starter and a quick study. Only one week after being hired, my supervisor. So this really brings out the aspect of you being a self-starter and a quick study because you're able to execute duties that your supervisor was meant to. Another person might look at uh, different works. Let's say, uh, what other people have said about you? One person will say that my research and writing professor described my appellate brief as memorable, creative, and compelling. That would really interest someone to find out mm. how good is this person as far as research is concerned. And then, my or argument. My, after my or argument, my mood coach described me as prepared, tenacious, and persuasive. Most of these aspects discovered that they would help someone to would have that desire of knowing who you are and they want to have you. The very last paragraph, and our last, would look at the third paragraph and say, the complexity of your third paragraph depends on whether you are responding to a job announcement or contacting an employer called. Remember we said that an employer called would be information you send out Sorry, not information, but the letter you send out to an employer who has not advertised. And we're saying that um, if you haven't already uh, specified in the first paragraph who you're looking for, make it clear in your third paragraph. Specify whether you're looking to get an academic credit or to get a work and study position, to volunteer or to get paid. If you're thinking of any of the above, make it clear that you are flexible and also specify at least roughly how much time per week you are available. Uh, in any documents you are enclosing with your letter, such as the resume, the transcript, reference list, or writing sample, include the latter three only if the employer requested uh, for them. <coughs> so I am giving a few examples which I think would work in cases where we have uh, the conclusion. Let's look at uh, case one, where we have this kind of conclusion. I would be grateful. I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to interview with you. I will be available over the semester break when I will be in Gulu from April 19 through August 7 or at any other time that is convenient for you. Wow, that would be good to me in such a conclusion. And the person can say, I have enclosed my resume, and it would be my pleasure to discuss my qualifications with you in person. Thank you for considering me. Look at the last one. I would welcome the opportunity to discuss my application with you and look forward to hearing from you, but however, let's note that don't say that I look forward to hearing from you soon. Reason being, it would look like you're trying to uh, force the person to accept and then get back to you, which might not be their intention, but the language here and diction matters so much as far as these letters are 
concern. So let's take note of the grammar. Basically, the grammar, let's proofread the letters such that we take note of the spellings, the punctuation errors, and everything. Reason being that the, the employees, or the, sorry, the employers take note of the letters and uh, are very, very much uh, specific as far as these letters are concerned, and they do give them, they do give them time. Hope you've been following. As we raise different questions uh, pertaining our letter writing skills, I beg that we put in consideration what we have covered. And if you discover that you've been lacking something, you can be able to fill that gap. Basically, on the few things that we have looked at, as far as uh, how we're supposed to tailor our letters, and considering the question of uh, why the employer should be interested in you, and later on, why you should be also be interested in, uh, in this employer. That would be so helpful in helping us to get to these different destinations where that we desire for. Why interested in this employer, and why should this employer be interested in you? In answering the why, we look at the different things that we think the employer is doing, or things that make the employer really stand out to you. And why should this employer be interested in you? We look at the skills, and we've been breaking down everything to make sure that uh, we have an idea of what it is required as far as uh, writing and providing these letters is concerned. Let's make a quick pause, and then see to it if we can try to look at one sample, and then we call it a day. Let's look at the first sample. And I'm saying that use the header on your resume or on your CV as the letterhead. Well, you can use that as the letterhead compared to the way you used it on your CV. Most times these days we have what we call um, personal stationery, whereby you design it according to uh, the way you would love it to appear as uh, the letterhead. Organizations already have this, but even we as persons, the only thing you can't have is a, might be a logo, but you might have your names designed and uh, come up with a very good letterhead. Having the name, your name, and the address, and the, the station where you are, and the box number, and then you can come, in, you can now concentrate on the inside address. The very first thing is always the date, like we're able to see. So take note of the date. Um, sorry for the spaces. So the spacing shouldn't really exist after the address is named. Let's take note of that. Always make sure that you indicate the name, the address is name. Reason being, it is very important for the, to know the person you're addressing the letter to. And then the title of the, the title, the person you're addressing, the organization, the address, and the city. And then we move to our salutation. Give me a minute to look at this. Remember, when we're starting, we say that the block style is the widely used form on writing letters today. So it would be good if we take it on as our style of writing the different letters that we have. There are a few different ideas here. So that is, we can have the letterhead, we have the date and the different details, then come to the salutation. So consider giving the name of the person you mentioned uh, as the address's name. So give 
give us the surname here. Then in this different uh, letter, I simply organized it in a way that you can have uh, the ideas of what to do, which font can I use, uh, the spacing. And as far as spacing is concerned, how should my aspects be uh, uh, structured? So I simply have an idea. I said that in the block style, all entries below the letterhead are left justified. Use the surf font, 12 points is ideal, but you can go as small as 10.5 to stay on one page. Single spaced or double spaced text, depending on the length of the letter. Use only one space after period, and then the former style of the block letter should be used for most cover letters. It conveys a completely business-like manner. Don't just, don't just find the right margin of your letter so it destroys the integrity. And then, I can give you time to look at the second one, I'm trying to talk about about the complementary clause, what should you consider, and then the addresses, so you can look at that as well. And then move on to the last where we're saying that the closing remarks should express clearly what you want. For example, an interview, specific opportunity, or anything, and then you can come to your complimentary clause, your name. If you have enclosed something, you can really indicate. Uh, don't indicate what you've enclosed, but indicate the, that you have different enclosures. CC would go to the person who will maybe receive a copy. In case you're trying to CC someone who is influential, that would be the courtesy copy. Then let's have a look at this one. This one would be a very good match, what we're discussing. Good. So we are starting with the debt. We don't have the header, so I don't have the, the address yet. But I would indicate my address above, OK? Wherever I want it, I would indicate it here. In case I have a very good personal stationery, I can indicate it there. And then I will have the person I am addressing it to there, Mr. Stephen Bukasa, Anthony Aklo, Magezi and Ashaba Advocates. And then, so that is the address. And then I go to the salutation. Who is the person? It is Mr. Bukasa. That is the surname. And then, Considering the other aspects we looked at now, they come into mind because we're going to ask ourselves, okay, now what do I include and where do I put it? So we looked at the paragraphs, we had the wordings and the structure, so now we are trying to organize it. So let's look at uh, the first paragraph. And the first paragraph is trying to give us now an idea of the introduction. Now the introduction about you and aspect to consider. Now, it's, I was pleased to see your daily record article on the history of muni municipal bond litigation. litigation. I plan to specialize in bond work and municipal finance, and therefore seek a law clerk position with your firm for the next month. Following my second year at Uganda Christian University School of Law, I have a background in finance and accounting, and I am currently taking law finance and administrative law. I have enclosed my resume for your review. I think the first, when you look at uh, the first paragraph, you're really impressed. Because this person has taken time to identify where he got the information from. You get it? What he would like to be in the next uh, few years, you get it? And where is uh, getting his, uh, where is going to get his degree from, and the different aspects that he's considering. 
When you move ahead, I beg that you can take time and read this for yourselves. Let us look at the second paragraph in order to identify, to see if the employer will really take in this information and be interested to meet this young man. Several of my employers have noted my ability to work independently with very little guidance. My most recent supervisor, Thomas Motebi, described me as one of the hard hardest workers he had ever seen. While working for Mr. Motebi, I managed three accounts and met my deadlines and even handling additional accounts for a co-worker who was unexpectedly out of the office. I look, I look forward to bringing this work ethic to my future career in the field of bonds and municipal finance and would especially enjoy using the skills in a small farm such as uh, Magezi and Ashara. I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to meet with you and discuss my interest in a low clerk position with your farm. Thank you for your time and consideration. I think this letter is really good and it really gives you an idea of who this person is. First of all, if you remember the other three aspects we discussed about that the paragraphs, the three paragraphs should have, they are well articulated. You can see that in the first paragraph, you have an idea of which kind of person is applying. Where did he get the information from? Which school is he going to? Okay, let's say, what's up with his academics? You already have an idea. And then, what about career-wise? Already have that demonstrated. Then the second paragraph, could there, why, um, why should the employer be interested in this person? That's already indicated. You can see it in the second paragraph. Of the things he has done, people that have appreciated him, and what they have appreciated him for. And then, the last way is to create simply pushing a goodwill by saying, I would greatly appreciate the opportunity to meet with you to discuss my interest in a low club position with your firm. Wow, that's really interesting to me. You can look at this later also. Look at it, look at it, look at that. Look at it. Remember, we did not use we don't have the header, so the first address is not indicated. We only have the inside address, so I would have used it on top, okay? So I might, I don't have it. If I had it, I would have indicated it also. So I have just used that. So let's look at the inside address. Look at the first paragraph. Look at the first paragraph. Ideas of where the information was retrieved from. person has an idea also of what the company or the firm is bragging about, some of, the some of the recent things that they have been engaged in and how they have really been successful and is justifying, the, is, has a justification to why I would like to join that firm. Well, let's look at paragraph two. So, would there be any skills that this person has that can really uh, be able to help 
as far as being called for an interview is concerned, yes, is giving us an idea of what he did at uh, Sempungu and Sentamu Advocates. Take note of the few uh, slight aspects that might not be matching, so you can take note of few. So you can see that there, he has been appreciated for something and he's trying to indicate it, that I've been appreciated for this and this is the person that appreciated me for that and what did that person have to say? Now the choice of words there is very important. Action verbs are very, very important. Rather than saying did, was, you're looking at the action words and how you're using them. The Anthony invited me to participate. Not I was invited to participate, but Anthony invited me to participate. Discover? My supervisor told me that I was the first clerk he had ever included. Not he had ever called in a meeting. No, he had ever included in a client meeting. Okay? No, this semester I will be working for the State House Department of Corporations. Not this semester I was selected to work for. No, this semester I will be working for where I look forward to refining my knowledge, not I will, where I think I will be able to get these skills. No, look forward to refining my knowledge of the laws that govern Ugandan businesses. And it's giving the time when the person will be available. Let's say you are at school and you discover there's an opening and that opening can really occupy you in case you're free in the next few months after your, your semester exam. So you would uh, actually concentrate on that and that would be a very good option to you to use such a letter to uh, really push out information, show that you have interest in uh, serving or you apply for a position which you think that in the next few months or will be open. Or actually, you might not see a position, or you can write a code letter to that uh, firm to express your interest. Even if it is internship, still it is the language that can help you to get there. And then, personal information. For Let's look at this. Now we are in an area where I think this would be our very last letter, and then we will go and have more, to pra more practice. I beg that we really try to pick a few skills from this. I can't say few, no, that we really pick uh, a lot from the organization, but we don't duplicate what we're seeing here. Let's be original, because the moment you duplicate this, it is really, it has been written, so it will always be you already see it indicated that uh, you have plagiarized. Let's look at uh, this. In areas where we discover we need sample information, sample information, informal interview, uh, informational, informational interview request. Now, in cases where we discover that we need to meet certain people, but we, we don't know how to get to them. This would be a very good way, very good way to get in touch with these different people. You try to write them in order to have, an, to have the better way of getting in touch with them, such that you can have, uh, share an experience, or see how they can guide you. Take note of the header that is not indicated, or we have the, Addresses, address, but the addresses, address is not there. So take note of that. Simply started with the date. So the first letter was giving us the basics: how we should do the spacing and what should we, what we should do. I am observing that, though, by spacing here, I wouldn't have used this spacing. Might not really much. So you can reduce on the spacing in the body, but here it is really correct. The only thing I don't have is the address's address, but the address's address, I have it. The date, space, 
single space and then I made that might not be single space. Uh, I did the double spacing and then the address, address is address, double space, salutation. I didn't, I didn't uh, hear the only challenge you might face is that I didn't indicate the subject line. You get it, but it's also okay. You can choose to indicate the subject line, which has re application for the post of this, but if you don't want, it's still okay for you to simply start off your writing in such a way. So here, this is simply for an interview. You simply want an interview with someone. They did something and you're so much impressed. You want to meet them. You've always wanted to meet someone, to talk about law with them, to find out how they can help you develop. You can take note of a few things that they have done that stand out. Your article in the African Law Experts Journal discussing constitutional, constitutional and policy issues involved with campaign finance in Uganda was intriguing to me. As a first year student at Uganda Christian University School of Law, with passion in what you have passion for, I am interested uh, in learning more about election and political law. I would appreciate the opportunity to hear your views about how I might best prepare for a career in this area. Well, that's really interesting. Very, very interesting. If you wrote this to someone, they would really want to have you say that you can really have a chat because they know they want to pass on the knowledge they have to you so that you can also have a very good career. Reason being you're interested in what they're doing. And then, would you be, would you be available for a brief meeting to tell me about your background and how you got started in election and political law. I would be grateful for any suggestions about, about what I am simply posing the question. You can see that the question has been posed and it really asking simply being uh, uh, that in that where you're asking to see that you can accept me to come, then I would be grateful for your suggestions about what semester break work and elective courses I should pursue in the next two years of my law school. I would also be interested in knowing the publications you read to stay current with the campaign, elections, and political issues. And then I'm able to what? To conclude. There's really a lot, there's really a lot that has to be discussed as far as uh, our letter writing skills are concerned. But this gives us an idea about the diction and the structure of our letters. I beg that we don't duplicate what we have seen here, but we think, read, and then sit down and think about how best we can really come up with original content. Because even what you're looking at here, when what you're looking at here was really uh, what we are looking at was also uh, written down by someone who sat down and then thought and said, okay, let me write something. You get it. So you cannot sit down and then come up with something original that you're proud of. As long as you are in line with uh, how we should structure uh, your letter. I haven't really had time to look at uh, the curriculum vita, your CV which we're going to look at in the next lecture. But now we, our concentration was so much on the letters and how we are supposed to, to draft them. I want to appreciate you so much for the time you've given to this. And I beg that you give it more and more time such that you helped as far as letter writing is concerned. Take note of the steps we gave uh, such that you have an idea of how to come up with a very good letter. Uh, say, <clears throat> sorry, very good letter that can really help you uh, have an interview. You can do a recap a little bit. You can think about a few things, but we can uh, do a recap as we conclude. Say we started with uh, having a mentor that can help you. Look through your letter after you've written it and the, your CV. We raised the two questions. Are you interested in this employer? Why should this employer be interested in you? Those are two questions you should ask yourself as you write. 
why are you interested in this employer? You get it? Note it. So those could be the things that make the employer stand out. The different things he has done that make really speak volumes about him then. Why should this employer be interested in you? What are some of the things that you have, the skills that you have which the employer should really uh, want, might really need, uh, or might help you to get an interview so that you go and practice. We looked at uh, the key aspects to consider when you're writing a letter and we say the first one is research. When you research, we looked at why, to res why you should research and how. And then we looked at uh, cover letters being, that was number two key, among the key aspects, that cover letters must be targeted. They must be going to a specific person. So don't simply address it to different people in the same cover letter to different um, platforms or different employers. And the last one was uh, content, deciding what goes into those different paragraphs. We looked at the first paragraph saying why why the employer uh, why the employer should be that one was raising why are you interested in this employer yes why interested in this employer where was the the first thing is first things first was it a recommendation from someone influential was it a job announcement so indicate is it a code letter you're simply writing it no no one has really um, and let's say you have not seen an announcement or anything, but you're simply writing to be part of an organization. So indicate, let, let's see that it is a code letter. But these code letters would best be, uh, best be pushed out. They would really look good if they have a recommendation. And then we move to the second paragraph where we say that why should this employer be interested in you? Remember the first paragraph talks about why you're interested, and then number two, why should the employer be interested in you? What skills do you have? How will you know? How will I know that what the employer needs in an employee? Research the website, okay? And then get to know that. Look at the academic background, your practical experience and personal qualities. And then the last paragraph was looking at uh, your conclusion. And, say, and then we say that here you should very be able to indicate so well. I think, yeah, we say that oh, we should, yeah, this is where we should indicate uh, what we have enclosed and uh, aspects about uh, whether you're looking for an academic credit uh, to get a work study or position, volunteer or anything. So that is it. And uh, you can also specify the time when you're available. And then we looked at a few examples or how to conclude your letter. Yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for uh, your attention and uh, sacrificing time to attend our lecture. So I beg that we take note of that. And we have, we have a very good discussion through the questions that I'll discuss with you on the platform so that we can be able to polish our skills. Uh, I'd like to appreciate you so much uh, Mark was also around, you didn't see him, but it was the one working on to this to see to it that we were able to, to have very good smooth flow in our, our lecture. So thank you so much, Mark, and the class. So I beg that the next time we meet, we'll talk about what we should include in our CV to make it uh, rich and uh, say that someone can really have it and see that we have the knowledge. All right, love you, take care. Thank you so much.